I work as a uh, self-employed uh, structural engineer. Now, I would like to describe a typical day for you in my office. Uh, since I work for myself, I have to pretty much handle everything. Uh, get up early, check my emails, correspondence is coming in overnight, respond to those as they have to be, as they are required, and uh, check to see if I have any meetings or appointments or anything like that that I have to go to in the morning. And then I uh, sit down, look at my task list, and decide what uh, needs to be done right away. And what can wait. Now as a uh, structural engineer my my main clients are, are architects so uh, I work as a subcontractor basically to the architectural firm that might be uh, uh, having a project they'll call me in we'll discuss what they're doing uh, how they want to how they want to uh, proceed with the project, what type of structure, whether it's a structural steel project or a concrete block and masonry or reinforced concrete, those kinds of things would even. We, uh, we uh, design structures from any, anything from reinforced concrete to aluminum. So uh, we have a, a wide variety of uh, things that we can work on. Um, once, once I meet with the architect, and uh, he gives me a definitive set of plans, and I begin, my, my work consists of uh, designing, well, trying to figure out what loads that building might uh, undergo. And uh, that, we determine that through uh, codified uh, building codes, information like that. <clears throat> Once that's determined, then we'll put those loads on the structure, we use a, um, uh, computer-aided engineering uh, software where we do analysis on uh, the buildings. We'll, we, I have a uh, software now that I can build a 3D model in the computer and uh, apply those loads to it, run the analysis, come up with a result, and then that's only the beginning part of the, the process that we, we do. Um, we take that analysis and then we begin to design the building. That is design, not in the sense that uh, what it looks like, but design in the sense of designing, finding out what size beam is actually required to carry a specific load in, in, the, in the building. That's just, you know, that's one example. We design the beams, the columns, the, the floors, the, the foundations. We go all the way to the, uh, to the ground top to bottom. And uh, once that design is completed, then we, all along, we're <clears throat> generating computer-aided uh, drafting documents that uh, uh, will be used to uh, build a project by the contractor. So we generate these documents as we're doing the design. <clears throat> and then in the end, we'll put all this together and uh, submit it to the architect for uh, review and during all this process we're always talking to the architect back and forth we're talking to other engineers mechanical engineers so there's a lot of interaction it's kind of like a team effort to get a building of any size put together well, um, my firm uh, we, <laughs> will design anything from a, a, a deck to a high-rise condominium so there's a lot of variety in what we do it's, uh, it's never a uh, it's never boring, you don't know, have a lot of things that you do over and over and over again. It's, uh, it's pretty exciting. I'm, I'm never bored. <laughs> um, um, after the, uh, the, uh, the drawings are put together, and then uh, we uh, put those drawings out for bid, the contract is awarded to the successful contractor, and the process of construction begins. Then there's a different phase of the, my uh, responsibilities. I administer the construction. That is, I look at just shop drawings. There are shop drawings that are submitted to me uh, from different fabricators, uh, for example, on structural steel. 
they'll draw uh, all the pieces and parts so they can be fabricated and I have to check all those uh, to make sure that they understand my design intent. And then uh, once that's all taken care of, we'll start with the construction and finally my uh, responsibilities lie in uh, uh, investigating or inspecting the work as it progresses to see this being done according to the plans and specifications. The requirements uh, to becoming a professional engineer, which is what I am, uh, there's kind of a long road, not too long, but long enough to make it uh, something that you want to be committed to. First thing you have to have is a four-year, minimum four-year college degree from an accredited engineering college. Now, once you graduate, uh, let me back up a minute. Now, if you want to continue your education, which is a good idea in, a, in some fields, um, you can go ahead and pursue a master's degree in engineering and in structural engineering you would you would actually focus on structures and uh, if you like that you can continue on to get a phd and at that point you could uh, become a college professor or teach in the academic world if that's what you wanted to do uh, but as uh, it is most people don't pursue a, a phd they want to go to work so um, what you, the very first thing I would recommend you do, you don't have to do this this way, but there's a, a test once you graduate from high, uh, college that is called the EIT, it's the Engineering Training Exam. And that's an eight hour long test and it, what it does is evaluates your, uh, uh, your knowledge that you've gained during your time in, in uh, school. Uh, once you pass that exam, you have you, you need to go to work for five years. Uh, you need to accumulate five years' experience working for a professional engineer in order to go to the next exam, which is the professional engineer's exam. That exam is uh, two days long. It's uh, two eight-hour sessions. And once you uh, complete and pass that exam, then you can apply to become certified or a registered professional engineer in the state in which you want to practice. Now you can register yourself in, in, in states all over the country, um, in multiple states. You don't have to just practice in one area, which uh, opens up your marketplace if you choose to be uh, self-employed, or it makes you more marketable uh, for a company you might want to work for. <clears throat> now, you're not done with your education after that. You still, in order to maintain your certifications in these states, you have to uh, uh, complete a certain number of continuing education hours, and, uh, and then you, every year or bi-yearly, you renew your license that way. The best part of the job, I think, is uh, for me, is after I've, uh, after all the work and completion and, and uh, consulting and everything has been done and the contract has been let and uh, we've overseen the project and you can, you have a, an enormous feeling of accomplishment that uh, that uh, keeps you going and you want to you want to continue that that feeling on the next project so i think really a, a job well done and the feeling of accomplishment is probably the best uh, uh, part of my work uh, the worst part is a lot of times in order to get those projects completed you have to put a lot of time in and uh, uh, a lot of extra time Sometimes you're you're working into the middle of the morning to get those things done. You have to meet deadlines and things like that. So that would be uh, probably the worst part. It'd take a lot more time than you would maybe work 40 hours a week. That's not going to happen. Um, and one other thing is uh, just to be straight up with you, the stress level in structural engineering is very high because 
what you do as a structural engineer involves directly life safety. I mean, you know, people occupy buildings and if buildings are not done correctly, things go wrong and people get hurt. So that's one of the things always in the back of your mind as a structural engineer is, is this safe? Will this work in, in the situations that it's designed for? Uh, my final advice to you is um, you need engineering is a, an applied science. In other words, you, you, you have scientific principles that are applied in, uh, to make them practical. So you need to be, have a strong science background. You need to have uh, a good mathematical background. Uh, those are the two key ones. Um, I think uh, if you choose to be an engineer and you, you're the first thing you probably need to do when you graduate is to go ahead and take your engineer in training test because all the information that's on that test is fresh in your mind and you can you know you'll do a lot better on the test some people wait and then they have a little more difficulty with it but um i really those are the things i think um that you need to do you need to be scientific it's, it's uh you need to have interest in that, you need to have interest in math, and um, you need to be able to work hard and long because that's what it's going to take.